How's it going everybody? It's Cloak and Daggers here and today we're gonna do some Halloween mayhem. I got about seven hours worth and we're gonna grind through as much of that today as we can. So let's get started here. We're gonna pop our skill pill as always. Ooh. Grab our gun and get cracking. Last time I maxed out the uh, AR Matrix LR15. And we're going to continue to use that. Uh, the reason I'm sticking with the LR15 and not moving up to the LR20 is because the, the minimum stats I have with the LR20 are lower, the damage intervals, than I would with the LR15. So once my stats are about equal to or slightly better than Ooh, good good first drop um as uh, about equal to the lr15 then i'll switch over to the lr20 because otherwise i'm just throwing money away it doesn't pay to go to a bigger gun and do less damage so that's why i'm continuing to use that despite being completely maxed out on it now the last halloween mayhem video i put up I got slaughtered, robbed, to say the least. I went in with 200 ped. I think I played for about two hours, and I walked out with like 89 ped and a couple strong boxes and a couple tokens, and that was it. Um, that's some heavy losses, plus the, the decay on my armor and just the cost of the guns. These guns are um, 35 ped TT, and they cost me about 42 or 43 ped off the, the auction. They're going for about 120% markup. So hopefully today will go a whole lot better. I haven't gotten any globals in a while to really make up for the the poor loot. And uh, if this first, I'll, I'll I'll go until the first boss comes and kill him so I can get the points and, and get the loot uh, strong box and uh, the token from him. But if the loot is not good, I'm going to probably leave and come back some other time. Uh, just because I don't want to take such heavy losses. Usually with the Halloween Mayhems or any of the Mayhems, uh, from what I've seen from other players and just from my own experiences, generally you do pretty good, at least in the shrapnel department. You get most of the shrapnel back that you put out. And then you just have to kind of boot the cost of... You know, your armor repair, your gun repair, amps and stuff like that. Um, but if you're not getting, you know, most of your shrapnel back, you know, 98% of it roughly. I'm just kind of throwing a number out there, but um, it's probably not a good day to play. Unless they really changed up the, the algorithm for, for mayhem. Um, this is not great, especially because you got to play for 15 hours and if you're taking brutal losses like that it's, I don't know if it's really worth your time so kind of crossing my fingers hoping that will go better actually what I ended up doing last time I played for that two hours in annihilation lost all that pad and I was watching the, the global tracker window up here and that day uh, curbs were just globaling like crazy like every other global up here was a was a curbos and they were all like in the provider range but I was seeing anything from 15 ped to like 200 plus on a level 4 mob so after that I went out and I found some curbs and I did a little hunting on them and my first run I spent 100 ped and I came out with 115 uh, so I did pretty good there, and then I made a second run, and I think I lost about 20, 20 pet or so. And then I kind of called it a night because I was sick of losing money. Um, I did nail two globals. Yeah, there we go. There's a decent drop uh, on the curbs. The first one I didn't, I didn't have. Uh, I didn't record. I was so mad. It was the very first one. I stepped out of the, uh, the terminal area over at Bora's, and the first first level 3 I shot, it globaled for like 12 ped, and then I looked over and I'm like, ah, oh, 
not even recording. And so I was pretty mad about that. But so then I started recording, and they were just hot. They were dropping really decent sized loot. I mean, when you're getting two or three pet off of level two youngs, and you're getting three, four pet off of the, the bigger ones, and then I hit another. I think it was a 25 pet global off of a guardian, which is like kind of the minimum for that size, for that level mob. But it was still a global nonetheless, and I did have it recorded in it. You should see it in, uh, you might have already seen it, depending on when these vi videos go up. <clears throat> but here again, that pro those providers are, looks like they're still pretty hot. Um, if you, if you want to go hunt those, those curbs yourself and, and try it out, um, either Bora's is always a good place. I always have good luck at Bora's hunting curbs. Otherwise, the the big patch of providers is right next to Fort Lahar, um, next to the the Kambibo spawns. They're they're kind of on the other other side there. You'll see the curbs, and they're all level four providers, which seem to be the ones that are are dropping the really big loots right now. Um, the only reason I'm not hunting them is because I really want to get through Mayhem and at least complete my first run. I was really, really hoping to, to do pretty decent this year. Even though it is my first year. But I, well, at least decent as far as, as the, the, the Ped Return and Shrapnel. Ooh, there we go. That's better. This this runs a lot, going a lot more similar to uh, my first couple runs when I when I initially started Halloween Mayhem. I I, was, I started out really strong, and then I had a couple days where I just I got robbed hard. They weren't even, and like, I, I wouldn't have cared so much about losing all the ped if I was getting, ooh, there we go, another another good one. Um, if I would have got a ton of, a bunch of strong boxes or a bunch of tokens, but I think I got like two strong boxes and they were both from, come on now, heal up. Um, they were both from the uh, cannibal guy, the boss, and the tokens. I think I only got like two or three tokens to drop and then I got a couple tokens off the boss. And then I got a bunch for completing a daily uh, Halloween challenge, and that was it. I mean, I I didn't get anything in return other than skills. Fortunately, I got a bunch of skills. I have all these skill pills saved up. I've been saving them for Mayhem. So glad I did. I've been just flying through the skills. Kind of like I'm flying through this coffee. Jeez. I'm only... I'm not even 10 minutes in and I'm almost out of coffee. Now they're... Alright, this is... This is going good. If it, if it continues like this, I might be playing here for 7 hours straight or until I run out of guns. One of the two. And even then I might jump out and go buy some... Buy another gun or two. nice about um, running those curbs is I was able to scoop up enough muscle oil to finish a couple crafting runs and craft up some uh, what are they plastic, plastic springs level level one or level two or whatever so I was able to free up some pet out of my inventory and buy some more guns today so I was pretty happy about that I mean, if I really had to, I probably could have sold some of that oil cheap or or, or found some way to, to pull out some extra ped, but I would much rather craft, craft that oil into a higher markup item and, and sell it on the auction, which it, it went, like, immediately, which is awesome, because I hate, I hate waiting for stuff on the auction, but 
sometimes that's the best way to go. I wish I, I wish I had more time to sit around and trade or or the, at least the patience for it. I don't I'm not a good trader, unfortunately. I should really do a better job of taking advantage of some of the stuff. Does that, does that guy have two rings for sale? Yeah, he's got an Easter ring from this year and the Halloween ring from the, this year, both for sale. Jeez. Must be nice. I wonder how many boxes he had to open to get those. I heal up with this new level 4 regen chip. It's been working out pretty good for me. It's really the only uh, mind force item that I really use. Once in a while, if I'm bored, I got a couple low level attack chips that I'll, I'll pull out and I'll go like hunt some punies or some other smaller mobs. Just, uh, just to change it up a little bit here once in a while, but uh, otherwise, for the most part, I pretty much just hunt with, with laser rifles. That's my, my main profession. I'd like to... I wouldn't wouldn't mind getting into the, the long blade profession a little bit more. Skill that up. Just to just to bring my health points up and to bring my, my strength up, I think would be really handy. Especially the health points. That's that's really gonna help down the road when I'm hunting much much bigger mobs. Cause right now it's it's pretty slow to get your your health up when you're when you're hunting with rifles, even uh, and your evade too. When you when you're when you're hunting with swords, your your evade goes up pretty quick too. Cause you get hit a lot more. Where where rifles. Rifles or, or any guns where you're doing damage from a distance. Usually they're half dead by the time they get to you. And sometimes by the time they get to you, they don't even they don't even hit you in that time while they're there. So you just don't get the evade points like you would would want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, okay, seventeen. Nice. Oh, there's that there's those providers going off again on the curbs. I might have to go back and, and check them out. I never did get a global off of provider though, the other night. FOMO was hot too for for mining. There was a lot of people hitting big big global well decent sized globals on FOMO. They were around three four hundred fed. Which to me is, is a pretty decent sized mining global. Maybe for them that's pretty little. I don't you know, I don't know. But this, th then again, this is coming from a guy who's never hit a triple-digit uh, global, or even made it into the Hall of Fame. So, those are some goals I'm still chasing, and 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 we'll get there eventually. I mean, that that just comes with uh, being a lower level level character. Oh, nice, eighty head off an alpha. Uh, like I, I think the the biggest global I've hit, and it was actually, ironically, a, a mining global, which I don't, and I think it's my only mining global. I hit a, I believe it was like 84 head Listerium dust on on Cali, and I wasn't even wasn't even amped. It was unamped. 
I was using like a 10, 102 finder or 103. I don't even know. I haven't mined. I haven't mined in forever. Come on, really? So, but later down the road, I want to get back into it, especially either once I have more money to cycle in the game. Because right now I don't have enough enough ped to really cycle to keep me mining for long a long time. Uh, part of that is due to the the losses that I, I get from mining. The other part is is um, the loot. There's you get a lot of different loot, especially if you're you're double dropping for ores and end matters, which I kind of like to do. Um, you get a lot of different loot, and then it's hard to build stacks big enough to sell on the market especially if you're unamped and it, and it takes a long time to build that up and then it, it you know it really dilutes your your ped card uh, so that's why i kind of quit mining not because i don't like it or not that it was good to me i just can't i i can't afford it like i can't hunting hunting's a little bit easier on the ped card it's easier to deal with some of that stuff though i i don't know i guess i could just uh keep certain certain loots that I want and then like the oddball stuff I can sell to I know a couple couple traders that deal with just ores and end matters uh, that usually give out pretty decent rates and then just recycle that pet that way but or I could TT it but I don't I don't really like TTing mining loot just because it, it usually has okay okay markup unlike some of the the hunting loot a lot of the hunting loot is just garbage it'll have like barely 101 percent or, or less than that it's, that's hard to sell or it'll have high markup and you, d you don't get enough of it it takes it takes you two years to get enough extractors to, to sell on on the marketplace but i think i got a guy now Who's gonna just start buying some of my bulk TT loot and uh, give give me like half of half of the markup or whatever on it? So we'll see. But and and that's kind of what I like about the Mayhem's is they kind of they they really simplify it down. You pretty much just get shrapnel, loot boxes, tokens. And then these guys are dropping these components, which I don't mind because they got good markup, and I'm probably gonna have enough of them by the end of Mayhem to either throw them up on auction or to make them worth selling on the trade channel. I don't know if I mentioned this. I, I got uh, I came in with about 200 ped worth of ammo that we're we're gonna cycle here. So, see how we're we're doing so far. We got almost 70 there. So we're actually up. Are we up 10? I think we're up 10 ped right now. We just hit level nine and mounted BLP. This is this is going a lot better. This is this is how I kind of expect Mayhem to go as far as loot returns. Even though I haven't hit any globals yet, I have hit enough bigger drops that it it, it, it really is kind of paying for itself. And I don't mind losing, you know, head on the armor decay and the guns, but I just I really want to get at least my ammo back so I can keep cycling that. Or make a little bit in the ant in the shrapnel. I 
Ah, oh, I'm so mad. Um, when I logged off the, the other night after I had that really crummy run, crummy run with uh, Annihilation here. Like, nobody was hitting globals, because I usually watch the global tracker fairly closely. Um, I'm in I'm in category one, so most people usually don't hit anything real significant. You know, maybe 50, 60 ped worth of in a global. Somebody in category one hit one for like 350 ped, like the second I logged off. I was like, ah, oh, that could have been me. That should have been me. But that's the way it goes sometimes. And who knows? It, even if I would have stayed, it probably wouldn't have been my loot anyways. It would have been nice. Oh, that would that would have paid for my whole night and done some. But the event, the, the this event is just it's super fun. Ooh, wow, we're grabbing skills here left and right. Level 8 and the Grenader hit. I don't even know what I would use that skill for, but that's related directly to spaceships? Spaceship combat? Someday I'd, I'd like to do some space hunting. It's like something you don't hear a whole lot about or really see a whole lot about. I've seen... I think I've seen like maybe like one or two videos of people doing some space hunting, but a lot of people don't do it because of, I think because of the pirates, so that if you would hit a global, all the pirates are going to come looking for you. But with the new changes to space, I think a lot more people are probably going to start doing it, which would be kind of neat and doing more more space related things. Because right now I do, I don't think there's really a whole lot for you to do up there other than it's a waste time traveling from planet to planet um and you know to, to get shot down and, and robbed if, if you are foolish enough to bring anything with you um but otherwise yeah uh, well it's skilling you can skill on the, the motherships that's that's kind of it's not fun but it's a neat aspect of the game which if if you're Considering about getting into the crafting career, definitely, before you do any crafting, get onto a mothership and unlock the blueprint comprehension. You do that by getting to, I believe it's level 10 in any of the crafting profession skills, and a vehicle repair is part of that, so that's how most people do it, is they'll, they'll jump on a mothership and they'll, they'll go and just repair it. And, uh... Yeah, that's, that's what I ended up doing. I did a lot of that. It's actually how I got through most of my my mentorship program was... That's just uh, auto-key to repair uh, uh, on a mothership. And, like, my progress bar, like, shot through the roof. Uh, for you new players, if you haven't signed up for a mentorship program, find, find a mentor. Uh, do that. That's... Like, one of the best things you can do, and do it as soon as you can, because it's based off of your skills. And as a brand new player, you get a lot of skills very quickly, and it's very easy to, to push that bar up. Whereas if you wait until you're, like, at my level, it's going to take you a lot longer to acquire enough skills to progress that bar. And the items that you get for completing it are more useful to lower and even even some of the mid-range gameplay it works pretty good um if you finish on planet calypso you're gonna get adjusted pixie armor like what i'm currently wearing um i actually ended up buying this off of the market um i finished my um mentorship on arcadia so i get the arcadia armor uh, which has slightly different stats, but it's kind of that green and black camel looking armor, which is pretty cool. And that was kind of the reason why I wanted to finish that it there. And then I wanted I wanted this armor for the stats because it had different stats that worked a little bit better um, on Arcadia because I or on Calypso because I do pretty much just play on Calypso now. Just because. 
Um, part of the reason is is the the market here is is better. There's a lot more buyers for stuff. Um, and the other reason is now with the new codex, I want to get all my old iron missions for Calypso done before those completely disappear. Um, so there's no point in me really going to a different planet anytime soon. Uh, just because I don't want to miss out on those iron missions. Once, once that's complete, I might venture out and go to like back to Arcadia or something. I know I, I got a bunch of stuff in inventory I completely forgot about. I got a couple hundred pets sitting over there that's just calling my name, but this is going to have to wait. There's a decent drop. We haven't had one of those in a while. Another curb. Not as hot as the other night, but it seems like there's still a global one, but usually curbs always do fairly good, it seems like. Maybe after like the first hour of Mark, I'll, I'll run and grab some real quick. I don't know. Something. I don't really want to pause, pause it all because I got the skill pill going and I want to get every single skill that I can out of it. There's a decent global. Thousand ped. Be a nice payday. So, I've for sure decided that uh, from now on, after after this mayhem, I'm gonna be doing all my mayhems live, at least for the initial run. Um, the videos haven't been doing great. I think I've talked about this a little bit in the other videos, but um, yeah, the, the watch times have been like five, ten minutes on on hour long videos or longer, and it's just like, oh, it's not. That's not super great. Not that I'm super worried about numbers, but everything else was doing really good, and now this is kind of like kind of hurting what I've what I've done. I had going, it's kind of killing the momentum on my channel, and I'm just like, Ugh. it'd be nice to keep that going, because it was doing really good, I was really happy with it, so, so I'm kind of just grinding and releasing some of these bigger videos just to kind of get through it, um, and then in the future, it's just going to be live, and then I'm just going to do like two or three uh, live uploads to YouTube and be done with it if people want to rewatch it or if they missed the, the actual live event. They can go back and catch it, but, um, yeah. Which, I don't, I don't, like, didn't really expect a lot of people to, to watch, watch them all the way through, which is fine. But 
I am I am trying to make an honest effort at at building a, a YouTube channel and and to get a, a decent following and and I wanna I wanna you know have 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 good numbers so that I keep getting viewers and people keep coming in. And unfortunately the videos just aren't working. And that's fine, that's part of the learning process. Otherwise, uh, it's been going good. I've really been enjoying YouTube. It's, ooh, there we go, 35. Silent Global, we'll call that. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. It, it's going a lot better than I thought it would. Granted, I'm in an awesome, awesome community. Everybody here in the Trophy Universe, in-game and on YouTube. It's just everybody's super nice and everybody's liking the videos and having not real long conversations, but I do like chatting with people a little bit in the comments. I like uh like being able Ooh, we got a strong box. A couple people have asked me questions, which is awesome. I like I like helping people out whenever I can. Sharing my my useless plethora of knowledge of Entropia Universe. And uh, it's kind of a, it's a nice way to kind of get to know some of the people in the community. All right, all right. So we got our first strong box. Sweet. How we doing? We're up probably 20 ped, about right now, as far as ammo goes. Alright, we need more of those. Not gonna complain. A lot of good crits on these last couple mobs. Guess we can keep walking. Five, not quite five and a half. I should probably mention, I should have did this earlier, but thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, so far, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future Entropia Universe content. And make sure you hit that notification bell so when I go live, you don't miss out on that. I upload videos a couple times a week, so be getting the benefit of that and if you haven't already i have a link in the description below to my entropy universe playlist so you can catch up on all the my previous videos
kind of curious what's it gonna take us to get into the Hall of Fame today. Six pack. Um, so it looks like if we want to break into the Hall of Fame, we need to get a minimum of 406 ped and 33 pack. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen today, but who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky. Wow, somebody hit 21 pet on a puny. That's 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 really good. Holy cow. Usually when the puny is global it's like five or six pet, not twenty. Gee, he's having a good day. Loot seems to be holding fairly steady here. I wonder how the uh the deeds are paying out. Especially the moon deeds. Nice. I bought a uh, just the minimum for deeds. Oh, we got a double there on Arcadia. Looks like it's like maybe once a week on those moon deeds. I thought they were doing a little bit better than that for a while. They were paying out like every other every other day or every third day or something like that for a while. But probably with Mayhem, I'm sure there's nobody really doing a whole lot on Arcadia Moon right now. Which even without Mayhem, there's usually not a whole lot of people doing a whole lot on the Arcadia Moon. 
And if they are, they're probably pretty heavily invested in it, and they're trying to trying to help boost that a little bit and get some of their money back. Cause I th I think they're still non non tradable. I think they still have some for sale in the web shop. I don't I don't think the Arcadia Moon was a good idea whatsoever. That was one of the bigger mistakes that was made in this game in recent time, other than some of the stuff that really pissed off the players, like the, the heck was it, the Laura pet, where they got rid of the second second buff that it wasn't supposed to have, which was like just an auto loot buff, which I thought was kind of dumb, like that made it so game breaking, like. Auto looting is like, who cares? Like, I could see if it was giving you, like, run speed and critical hit or something. That, like, it would actually affect your your loot and how fast you could loot. Not how fast, but how fast you could actually kill something. But, like, auto loot is, like, it's just a convenience thing. Who cares? Let them have it. Yeah, sure, it boosts the value of the pet because it has, you know, two buffs instead of one or whatever, but... It's not like it's going to break the game. And the the value of the pet one Yeah, it, it spiked up for a little while, but once all the pet tamers get over there and and saturate the market with it, it the price would balance out eventually. So, I don't I think that was just something kind of dumb on Minarch's end and I think people blew it up a little out of proportion. Yeah, I killed the value of it a little bit, but... The, the, it's just an auto-loot feature. Who cares? It saves you a couple clicks a day. You know? I don't, I don't even like auto-looting. I, like, I would rather manually, manually loot. But that's just me. Maybe some people are... Don't like all that extra clicking. I don't know. Yeah, no, the, uh, the Arcadia Moon just... I'm trying... Ooh, nice, four and a half. Um, I'm trying to think. I can't remember if I did... Talked about it in a video or whatever. Um, but I guess it doesn't hurt to kind of go over it again. Entropia Universe doesn't need any more land areas of any kind. We don't need any more planets. We don't need any more moons, we don't need any more, you know, hell mines or FOMAs or, or whatever. Like, there's plenty of space for people to play. And instead of adding whole new areas and basically introducing another economy into the game that the game itself can't support, and that's. Ooh! Strongbox, Duped, nice. Um, the game just isn't going to be able to support it. If you look at some of the other minor planets, so I'm not talking about Calypso, I'm not talking about Arcadia, or even maybe Rocktropia, but like Cyrene, Too Long, Next Island. The economies, they don't really have much of an economy there, and that's why those planets are struggling the way they are. There's nobody there, because there's nobody there to buy your stuff when you do get loot. You end up TT and everything, and uh, and it's amazing those planets have held on as long as they have. So to to introduce a, a new planet with a new economy, because you know, or I mean, I guess if they really wanted to, they could they could link it up with like the Arcadia economy. You know, like, make the auction for the moon and planet Arcadia the same. Maybe it wouldn't have been so bad. I think that would... Maybe that would fix a lot of that that problem. But... And then to, and then to throw the deeds out before it's even developed, because then they're using the money that they got from the deeds to develop. But it's just... Oh, it's such a mess. It was just, in my opinion, it was doomed on conception. 
this is a poorly conceived idea. That money that they used to build the Arcadia Moon should have been used to develop what's already in existence. They should have put it into the Ar Arcadia Underground or Planet Arcadia itself. You know, make, work on rebalancing the economy, making the economy better for the players. I'm not saying give give more money to the players necessarily, but figure out a way to bring those markups up so that players can make more money off of other players, not so much off of the game. Because if I could go hunting and instead of my average loot being 103% or 104%, get it up to like 110% where I might actually stand a chance of making a profit when I sell it to other players. And I think a, a lot of the reason the economies on these planets aren't great is because the crafting in this game is not nearly as strong as it needs to be. It was it was a lot better earlier years. Like long long probably before I was playing. Actually I know before I was playing. Um and one of the things that really killed it was that stupid explosive projectile blueprint crashed the, the economy in the game pretty good. At least the crafting end of it. Everybody quit crafting items like armor sets and guns and whatever and we just started crafting explosive uh, projectiles which is pretty much just TT stuff. It's, you know, you're using either nano cubes or you're using and then, and then you're TTing the ammo or selling selling the explosive projectiles. And it's it's not doing anything for the game because I don't know anybody who hunts with an explosive projectile weapon. And I, I think those are used in ships maybe? I'm not even 100% sure what you would even use those for. So that's my thought. Make, make crafting better. Make the crafting economy better somehow. Figure that out. And I think in turn that would make the mining better and it would make the hunting better for a lot of people. And I think if the, the economy was a lot better, people would stand a better chance to make money and people would be more willing to play and put more money into the game. And I think you I think a lot more people would stick around a lot longer if, if it was a little bit easier to make to make money. I'm not saying that and when I say make money, I don't mean I'm gonna go out hunting and profit every time I hunt. Ooh, there we go. Or every time I go out mining, profit purely off of like a TT profit. I'm not talking about a TT profit, I'm talking about turning around and selling my stuff to, to get over, to, to get past break even and to, to go into that positive of number. Because right now, you it's very hard to even just to break even to, to cover the cost of your ammo and your, your decay for your stuff right now. Because the markup on everything just doesn't exist. Or you have to cycle massive, massive amount of head for that that markup to really have an impact. And most people, and 90% of the players in the game just don't cycle that kind of head. I'm talking like thousands, tens of thousands of head that people are cycling weekly, monthly, even to uh, to really get the benefits of of that markup. You know, if you're only c cycling 100 pet a month, you know, 1% is nothing. Where if you're, you're cycling 10,000 pet a month, 1%'s a little, little more significant. Uh, how are we doing on loot? Ooh, two boxes. 
Nice, and we're, we're ahead on our ammo. A couple ped. Two, a couple two tree ped there, guy. We up ahead on this. Good, pretty good. Wow, 0.7 ped. A K. That's really bad. That's the other thing that's that's really poopy in this game right now is the sweat mark. It is just... I didn't think it was going to even get... I mean, 0.7 is just absurd. I don't know if that's what everybody's selling or buying it for, but... Jeez. So I, I started playing this game roughly five years ago, and right about then the market was at... If you held out, you could probably get two ped, a K. Um, but it was probably more like a ped 80, 1.1.8, which wasn't wasn't too bad. I mean, wasn't great. Um, and as as it declined, I thought, you know, one ped per K was like rock bottom prices that nobody would sell it for less than that. I've seen people advertising that they're selling it for 0 0.9, 0 0.8. That guy was that guy wanted to buy. It. I mean, that's just that's just robbery. But there's not really a whole lot of people buying the sweat, and there's just so much of it on the market that they can they can ask that, and somebody's bound to give it to them because everybody's so desperate to sell it. I don't even know why people even bother to collect it anymore. It's not worth anything. And partly, and partly because, you know, mine art kind of killed the economy on that too. When they, they introduced vehicles and everybody quit using the teleportation chips. And they, I think they added a lot more cheap teleporters into the game too. Um, is another reason for that. So, and the teleportation chips used mind essence, which is made from sweat. So that's, that was the driving force behind that market. And people were able to get... 5 to 10 ped depending on what year it was how new the game was and so as a new player yeah you could you could sweat for a couple hours and you have a hundred ped you know you could make a hundred ped sweating in a day no problem now to, to sweat a hundred ped that's that's a hundred plus hours easy easy hundred plus hours sweating and then and then you got to find a buyer for it it's just... and I know they I think they tried to supplement it a little bit with the welder welding wire blueprints using sweat but 
not them other than motherships, which is the only thing keeping the sweat marks alive, in my opinion. Because they do a lot of repairing. But as far as any other Joe Schmo in the game, ooh, nice. Nobody, nobody really, nobody really uses that much sweat. I guess there are still some people who use Mind Force to a certain degree, but most people don't hunt with it. Some of the older players, I think, still use their mind, you know, their their teleportation ships, and probably just because mind essence is pretty cheap, I would imagine. Because sweat isn't worth anything. My solution to the issue is when you refine the oil, you should have to mix sweat with it. And that would, I know it maybe doesn't make sense, but it would boost the, the sweat economy because then people would actually be, you know, using that material. Because most people are very careful with their vehicles. I repair my vehicles like once a year, if that. And it's, you know, maybe a couple ped to do it. It's not, it doesn't cost very much. This is my thought. Probably get a lot more newer players if you could get a better grip on the game, get get further into the game based off of sweating. I think I think you know so many people come in thinking that they can sweat, make decent money. And then they spend all this time and they don't get anything for it. It's very discouraging. You know, and if you're not going to get anything for your sweat, what, what are the chances of you getting money out of anything in this game? Doesn't exactly want to make you put money into it. Ooh. What did you get? Level 5 gunner damage. We're up seven head. Nothing crazy, but we're still in the green. We're in the black. Whatever the expression is. We're not in the red, I know that much. Bulma looks like it's hot again. Jeez. thing I've been meaning to do, and I still haven't gotten around to it, is I gotta find preferably a free source of uh, copyright free music that I can start using on YouTube. I think that would add a lot to my videos, especially like uh, if I was doing a live stream or, or another big long video like this. Another strong box, sweet. Because um, I, I, I just I don't have the ability to talk constantly for hours on end. There's, there's going to be some gaps in there, unfortunately. And uh, that's where I feel like music would be a strong move on my part, just to kind of keep keep the flow of the game going, give you something to listen to while, while I'm not talking and trying to think of something to say. Um, anybody knows any good sources of free, copyright-free music? 
point I don't have to pay like a subscription or or buy the music to get the rights to it and I can just access it and use it and stream it. That'd be really cool. Even even if there's like some ads in it, I wouldn't even mind that. Cause I understand, you know, they gotta make their money somehow and it's usually if it's free, usually there's ads involved. Ads make the world go around. We got two two oh nine. Came in with two hundred ped. Route nine. Alright. Let's keep well I gotta I gotta kill the boss anyways, but I think I'm gonna keep going besides that point. Too. Usually it's like five to ten minutes after the hour mark. We're only we're at an hour and one minute. Where is he? Nope. That guy. He is fast. That's crazy. It's like a truck too. strong boxes it's pretty good so this will give me five and a token and then after this I gotta pop another skill pill Like too many people get globals from the, the survival, or maybe just not that many compete in survival. I don't know. Ooh, don't kill me. I think everybody everybody prefers annihilation, but it's nice they do give you some variety. Ooh, there's that crit I was concerned about earlier. Should be should be able to get him from here. Give me something good. 250 points and two pet and shrapnel. Ugh. Wow, that's for the amount of bullets you gotta pump into the guy. That's pretty crummy. Alright, so we got that. We're gonna pop one of these. Ooh. And we're gonna keep going here. Boost. What do we get? 49% laser weapon. Five minutes. 
Nice. We also have the skill pill going, which is this one here. 50% strength for an hour. And then these two are from my, my ring. I'll pull up here in a second. These are these angelic rings are pretty pretty nice. Oop, I forgot to loot him. Seven and a half, nice. Sad one though. The little guys give you better loot than the boss. Um, but anyways, if you're a new player, I highly recommend picking one of these up. They're they're pretty cheap, I think. Yeah, markup is no, nine. 9, 10 ped, um, in full TT, they're 10 ped. So for, for less than 20 ped, you can get one of these, but it's an item you wear, and it these give you 30% bonus health regen, and an extra 12, 12 total points. So your health regen's 30% faster, and you get an extra 12 hit points. For 20 ped, as... As far as I know, it is an unlimited item. You can you can repair it, and the decay on it. I think I repaired it when I bought it, and I mean, I've gotten through all of ten hours of mayhem and all the other hunting I've done since I've had it for a while. It's just, I mean, it doesn't really decay hardly at all, so it's definitely worth picking up if you haven't gotten yourself one already oh excuse me lunchtime. Those two are full. Pretty happy. I don't think my camera's froze up yet, which for whatever reason it doesn't seem to do it when I'm doing playing games. Fortunately, but I've I've had it a couple times where I was doing recording uh, voiceovers for videos, and uh, it kept freezing up on me. Like it did it like three or four times in like 15 minute time period, which is pretty frustrating. So otherwise, it's a pretty decent camera. Like, I like the quality of it. Hmm. 
Um, in case you're wondering what, what webcam I'm using, I got a Logitech, and it's a C930E, I believe is the, the number. Picked it up off of Amazon for about 80 bucks. The, the camera itself is really good. The mic on it is terrible. So what, if you go back to, to like my first handful of videos, I, I was using that to do all my voice recording and it, it just, it sucks. So I, I picked up a Blue Yeti microphone and that is what I'm currently using. And it's so much better. Hey, three and a half. Ooh, uh, almost four. More than bonus. Up to two pet of those. One pet on the provider, that's pretty good. Kind of half tempted to go hunt some more of those, but I also really need to get through mayhem here. So I woke up this morning pleasantly surprised to see that one of my videos has finally broken the 100 view mark. Hooray. Um, ironically though, despite being pretty much a Entropia Universe channel, it was not an Entropia Universe video that um, broke the 100 views. It's actually my bug fix for Borderlands 3 video. Um, for whatever, it started out really, really slow. I only had a couple views on it and then like out of nowhere, it just like started picking up a ton of views, and today, yeah, I hit. I woke up and it was at like 100, 102 views. I have a couple of Trophy Universe videos that are floating around mid 90s mark, but none of them have have crossed that 100 viewer threshold. Uh, but I'm sure they will at some point. This is this is gonna take time. Yeah, the channel is still still building a lot of momentum, but I'd like to get some uh, more videos out from from different video games. As much as I like doing Entropy Universe videos, uh, having a lot of fun making them. Uh, the, the community is just too small as of right now to build any kind of real channel behind it. Um, it's a great way to prepare oneself for making a YouTube channel and, and breaking off into other other games gives you a good chance to practice making thumbnails and interacting with the the community and, and learning all the different stuff that goes along with making YouTube videos. Because um, everybody's very nice and very friendly and, and you know they're willing to, to give you tips and they'll watch the videos even if they're maybe not the best quality or they're, they're more willing to overlook a lot of the, the flaws that you might have as a new new YouTuber, whereas other games, the, the content is so saturated with content creators, if your if your stuff isn't up to snuff, they're just gonna drop you and go watch one of the other content creators. So it's a it's been a fantastic platform for learning, and I will always continue to make Entropia Universe videos as long as I possibly can, as long as the game is around and I can financially afford to um, but in order to get the results that I want from my YouTube channel I'm definitely gonna have to go down some different avenues as far as games go so it's kind of thinking about doing some more Borderlands videos um, and may and possibly some other games I haven't I haven't really made up my mind yet on what exactly I'll want to do 
I might have to make a couple videos. Uh, I apologize about the noise, the, the noon whistles going off in my, my town. Um, that's what that noise was. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I haven't, I haven't exactly decided what, what games I want to cover for sure. Um, some of them might be just like a quick review on a, on a game and that's it. I might not ever touch it again. Um, they're definitely, uh, I, I do need to find some stuff that I can make a lot of content on, on a regular basis. Borderlands 3 was one that I was considering. I was also considering, um, Star Wars Battlefront, um, 2. Uh, despite being two years old, the content for it is actually at its, like, peak right now. They're actually making more content for it forever than ever. The game has really made a big, huge comeback. So I was thinking about maybe getting into that, and hopefully they would make a, a Star Wars Battlefront 3, and then I can, I can, um, go for you know, progress, or not progress, what's the word I'm looking for? Tran transist in from Battlefront 2, you know, I already have an audience kind of built up from that, and transist into Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront 3. But I don't, I don't know if they're for sure going to do a third one, so that's why I'm kind of hesitant about jumping into that. I do really, really like the Star Wars Battlefront games. Um, just unfortunately, they haven't been doing so Great. Like I said, two two is making a comeback. So if uh, if, if they can kind of turn turn it around, maybe maybe they will come out with a third one and get it right finally on on launch. So and if that's the case, I would I would definitely love to cover that. Maybe even despite all of its probably going to have shortcomings because it is an EA game. Um, a little, little salty about that company and what they and what they did with that. The game, with the whole Star Wars franchise, I mean, they, they have the exclusive rights right now to make Star Wars games and they're not not putting out the content that they, sh they should. They, they're kind of squatting on it and they're not making, making games. Granted, there is now finally... The um, what is it? Fallen Star Wars Fallen Jedi or whatever. The, this single player game, uh, which looks pretty neat. Um, I don't know if I'll do a video on it or not. I haven't even, actually. I haven't even fully made up my mind if I want to buy it or not. Um, because usually with like single player games. A lot of times I'll wait like six months to a year until they come down in price. I don't like paying 60 bucks for a game if I don't have to. And with a game like that, if it doesn't really have a whole lot of online components or, you know, it's pretty much an offline game where I play it by myself and if you're just there for the story and the gameplay, yeah, it's not worth 60 bucks. There's no, <laughs> there's no game like that worth 60 bucks to me. Uh, whereas if it's a heavy PvP player-based game, like something like Star Wars Battlefront or uh, you know, Call of Duty Battlefield, anything like that, those are the games that are you want to pick up as soon as possible and start start playing those, so that you can kind of keep up with the community and you don't get that skill gap that you get from coming in late. Um, or you don't have the, the map knowledge, or you don't know what which guns are the best to use, uh, or you gotta unlock stuff, and everybody's got all the good stuff unlocked, and you're still playing with the the basic stuff that's you know terrible to use. Um, those those are the kinds of games you, you want to get in early. Ooh, seven sixty one and a token. Two tokens. I still haven't, still haven't looked at the mayhem vendor. I really got to do that one of these days. I'm sure I'm nowhere near having anywhere near enough tokens to get anything in there. What? Um, the, kind of tripping over my tongue today. I don't have enough tokens to get anything, let alone anything like significant like say I'm 
sure all the unlimited stuff is just like an absurd number of tokens. Like a couple thousand. Where like maybe it's some of the unlimited stuff you can probably pick up for like a thousand tokens or something. Or maybe a couple hundred. But I, I I don't really know. I haven't I haven't checked the vendor act. Maybe stuff in there is cheaper than what I'm expecting, but I highly doubt it. Angelic rings. I wonder if those are in the Halloween strong boxes. Those angelic rings are the ones that I was talking about earlier that give you the, the health bonuses. like one that is stuck in a wall or a tree oh there he is oh skills that's what we don't look at or professions 23 all right so I think 20, 25 is the cutoff for category one, but there should be no, there's no way that I'm going to surpass 25 in the next five, six hours. Maybe, maybe by the next Mayhem. If I marry Mayhem, I'll be past level 25 for a profession. Alright, decent. I hate everybody. <laughs> Ooh, another strong box. All right. See, at least today I'm getting strong boxes. I like that. Not that I'm going to open any of them. But I plan on turning around and selling them. I'm still not exactly sure what the, the going price is on those. Should probably figure that out one of these days.
100 for ped. Almost. Not, yeah, not, not quite for ped, but really, really close. We'll round it up to four ped. Just about complete rank nine on the Halloween creature challenge. It's pretty sweet. gonna kill me. Alright, we're good to go. Come on. Hundred pet off of a cat too. Pretty good. Nice. 85 off the of Boma. Everybody haters is doing pretty good. We're not doing too bad ourselves. there. One should put us over on finish up rank nine here for us. So we'll see what we can get for some sweet skill points. Annihilation Zombie 174 head. Very nice, sir. Alright, we're gonna heal up. So we won't be paying attention. That guy walking over here. Who we got? Nothing for you, Vade. I'm gonna do melee damage, I think. 424 experience points. Wow, that's awesome. 
That's a lot. What do we get? Level 9 and 2-handed clubber. Level 9 and 1-handed clubber. Level 8 and whips. Alright. I think I had one for the curbs, too. Look at that. Um... Let's do... Let's do Courage. Here we get 16 points in Courage. Alright. Do I have another one? Oh, I got another one. Look at that. Ooh, definitely gotta do Evade. Now there's 25 points in that. Puts us almost up to level 8. Four and a half. Nice. We get 24% in laser weapons. Oops. I heard of the progress bar by accident. Seventeen and a half. Now we're cooking. Cooking with gas. Where are my skill points at? I'm only at 50, 53,000 skill points. Ooh. That's how much of a noob I am. We're gonna fix that. Yep. halfway through our second hour and I think after this I'm gonna take a little lunch break maybe I'll look into finding some music to play I think that'll spice things up a little bit do some Aatrox hunting and uh, knock out those iron missions for the Aatrox because I think every tier for the iron mission you can get either evade or dodge which I, I mean I just want the evade but either either or is good but 
I mean, should be able to scoop up a lot of evade points and really get my level up there. Plus we got the uh, strong boxes too, so they're probably worth a couple pet a piece. There's what, maybe another? They were three pet each. We got 18, maybe like 18 or 24 pet. You look at it that way, we're way ahead. be like 30 pet ahead on that. Maybe not, maybe not quite 30. 20, 25, easy. Yeah, so we have seven, seven boxes, plus another three pet there. We're doing all right. Can't complain. harness. That'd be nice to have. These are expensive though. Crazy expensive. What's the market on this? Plus almost 4,000. That's a lot. Four thousand pet plus plus the TT times seven. I can't even do the math on that. That's a lot of pets. 
I mean, even even the four thousand four hundred dollars four times seven is what twenty twenty eight. That's almost, that's like three thousand dollars worth of in-game armor. That's insane. I'm kind of tempted to message this guy about the strong boxes. Hey, 4671. Nice. Not quite a global, but we'll call it a silent global. I better heal up. Very nice. Very nice. That's gonna help. 166. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That makes me happy. I'm, I'm curious. I'm gonna message this guy. Where is he? And a token, sweet. Trying to find out if he'll give me a, a better price for bulk or if he just has a set price that he buys for each one. Nice. 
Okay, he said two pad for per box. Try not to waste this guy's time, but I, I was just really curious to see what they're going for. So he said he buys them for two, two pet each. So I wasn't too far off. Um, and that, that might be just him. There might be people out there who, who buy them for more. Awesome, I know. Messaged me. Prices can go up and down. Nobody knows what the price is going to be tomorrow. At least he was polite about it. I mean, I was kind of wasting his time, but he wasn't—he wasn't exactly listing his prices in the in the trade chat either, so. Kind of his fault <laughs> that I had to waste this dive, but gotta gotta figure it out somehow. So yeah, maybe maybe I'll hold out, see if I can get three, four pet a box, maybe instead of two. I'd like to get at least three would be nice. And it kind of kind of depends on the boxes, and, and maybe I can get a better price if I have. Um, have them in bulk. What are we doing? 50, 54 there? Oh wow, we're way, we're way up on, on our pet here now. Oh, we had that, what was that, 43, 43 pet drop? That, that's what put us way, way up there. And that's what we needed. Which... I'm gonna need some of that extra pet to buy an extra gun or two so I can get through this event. Wow, that guy got two globals back to back on zombies.
I wonder if people base the price off of, like, the chances of them getting the Halloween ring. And, like, how many Halloween rings have been found, and they kind of use that to gauge the, the value of the boxes and the chances of them getting one. So, like, if none of the boxes, like, all the rings have been found, which I don't know if they... If Mindark releases that information of how many rings they're giving away each year, or if people just kind of guess. Um... Because if all the rings are found, boxes are going to be pretty much worthless. I mean, you get... I think you get, um... At least... Uh, what would you call it? Uh, the, the... The price of... I think the keys... And the keys, I think, are worth... Don't quote me on this, like... I need to get five keys for like maybe it's ten bucks. I don't know. Maybe that's not right. Maybe it's five keys for five. I don't know. But either way, you gotta buy keys to open up those boxes. So <clears throat> it uh that kind of affects the price. It'd be nice if you could get the keys in game without having to buy them with cash, but I think that's to kind of help continue to bring money into the game. Which which is smart. That, that's smart on them. And I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with just selling the, the boxes and not opening them, because pretty slim chance of you getting a, a Halloween ring or any of the Mayhem rings. If you do, you just struck it rich, but... You gotta open a lot of boxes to get one of those. Even then, there's no no guarantees. Which I mean, for the most part, I guess it's not terrible. You do get the majority of your ped back when you open the boxes, or sometimes a little bit more. Uh, at least as far as like you'll get like universal ammo and you'll get like skill pills and stuff and uh, different different other pills that give you like faster run speed and critical reload and whatnot. Critic critical reload, faster reload and critical hit damage or critical chance, I guess it would be. So you know if if you can maybe instead of depositing or buying the, the refill packs, just buy some keys and open up some boxes. Deposit that way. So I got for sure 14 pet there. Another three there, that's 17. Then we got almost 200 pet there, so we're up 17. Another 35. So we're up like 50 pet. A little more. two-hour mark here. Got just a couple minutes left on this pill. And the boss should be rolling in. And then I'm going to take lunch.
nice. Seven and a half ped. Just a great hit. Man, today is just going so much better. And sometimes that's the way it goes, is you know, you're gonna you're gonna have good days in Entropia and you're gonna have you're gonna have bad days and if you're having a bad day, you know, sometimes it's better to just quit playing and walk away and go do something else and, and come back a different day. Uh, cause sometimes on those bad days if you try to keep playing and try to you know turn it around, it just burns you in the long run. Whereas if you walk away, you save your ped, come back on, on a good day and and make some and make some ped instead of losing it all for once. That's kinda how today is going. We're we're making some ped. Not a lot, but we're making just just a little. Sickle is just killing it in Cat 10. He's a pretty big name player. I see him pop up on the Globals window quite a bit. Even not during Mayhem's. He's got kind of a cool name. Kind of, kind of memorable. It sticks, sticks in my mind. One of those names is you go, oh yeah, yeah, I see him all the time. I, I remember his name. I've never met the player, I've never talked to him, but I do I do see him up there quite a bit. Same thing with like Jonathan Jack Black, he's always crafting it seems like. Coin oh my G guy. He was the guy that was hitting um, globals on the curbs the other day like crazy. Like his name was like every other name was him for the curb globals. He was just slaying them the other night. one on an Argonaut. It's 30 pet on a young. Curves are still doing good. Taking the crap out of my table. There we go. I'm still trying to like learn the range of how far I can sit away from my mic and it still sound decent. So if, if 
If I get real quiet, I apologize. I'm still... I haven't quite figured it out yet. I'm so used to talking into my webcam and I have to like... I have to sit like this and like yell at my... My mic. And uh, so I still kind of have that habit ingrained in me where now... I got the Blue Yeti. It's sitting a little bit closer. But it's, it's a much higher quality mic and it, it picks up my voice a whole lot better and it sounds a whole lot better. Hey, you teared up my pixie helmet. Which is crazy because I've had that forever and I still ha <laughs> haven't been able to tear it yet. I don't know if I will, being such a low armor, but I don't know, maybe, maybe someday it'll be worth putting some enhancers on. And there's Hammer and Sickle again. Her Kirby. He always does a lot of crafting. See his name up there all the time. He always seems to be on when I'm on. Head, just in shrapnel. <clears throat> Still got plenty of gun left to shoot. Just over the hour mark, so boss should be coming pretty soon. Take him out, and then I'm gonna eat. I'm getting so hungry. So wheat. I'm coming out with more more ammo than what I started with. Keep it that way. Maybe we can break the three hundred pet trap no mark. That'd be nice. Come out with an extra hundred pad and shrapnel. All right, here he is. Let's heal up. Probably pulling 
just a little bit away from the respawn spot in case he does kill me. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to start wrapping up this video while I'm killing this guy. If you've made it this far in the video, you are freaking fantastic. Thank you so much for watching for two hours. That's awesome. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future Tokyo Universe content and other gaming content as well. If you want to, you can swing down to the description below. I will have a link to all my Entropy Universe content so you can catch up on anything that you may have missed from my previous videos. And if you have any questions, concerns, or you just want to say hello, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. I do read all the comments and I try to respond to all the ones that I can. Um, unless you you know, something, say something really, really weird, maybe I might not respond to it, but for the most part, questions I always answer, and I usually say at least hello back, or something, something to that degree. I really like talking to people, getting to, get to know my viewers a little bit, uh, better. So, thank you so much, and let's see what happens with this guy. I think we can finish him off here without, without dying. Oh, so close to that level. Level 80 Vader. 250 points. A buck 66. You gotta be kidding me. Ah, oh, it's brutal. Off of a, off the boss. All right. We're gonna pause that there. I'm gonna check my armor DK real quick. Whatever. Yeah, the timer stopped. <clears throat> I don't know why this screen always takes forever to load, but whatever. I always feel like it freezes, but it's just a really long load screen. There we go. Got some psychedelic colors going on there. Oh, you know what? I think the mayhem. I'm in. I'm in Twin Peaks right now. There should be. Uh, I think the mayhem token guy is here somewhere. Let's look at him first, real quick. If this ever loads, come on. A slightly beefier computer. I think I have the graphics <clears throat> maxed out or pretty close to maxed out. Um, and and the game runs fine for the most part. It's just when you teleport to areas, it it takes forever for everything to load. Come on. I think he's up here. If I remember right. Attribute, combat token. Okay, so he's he's here. He's still. Oh, there's a bunch of people up here. Okay, daily, combat. Come on, the one I want to walk. There we go. Okay, so if you don't know, I'm at. Uh, Twin Peaks, and you come up on this little building. Ugh, stupid thing. Kind of uh, across across the way from the mall. Uh, oh, great. Now it's bugging out on me. Come on. Part of this is probably because I have OBS going. Come on. What is, what is that button? I can't even. Crap. Okay. Well, this is embarrassing. <laughs> um. I can't unlock my view. There's a. 
Okay, that's first person. There's a button for it down here somewhere. I thought it was one of these. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. All right. Um, let's see what they got here. Consumables. Ten tokens for one. Okay, so these are going to be probably pretty expensive. Holy cow. Oh, I bet you this is a skill one. Yeah, 100% skill for an hour. It's 30 tokens. All right. I'm sure the other ones are just like fast to reload and stuff like that. So limited gear. We can get amplifiers. What's a matrix? Is this for... Lifesteal, evade, dodge is increased. So this I think is an implant. Oh, it's a melee weapon attachment. What is this? Wait, durability. I don't even know what it does. It absorbs part of the team. Oh, so it like doesn't decay as fast. That's interesting. That's 2,000 tokens. Okay, let's check out the unlimited gear, because that's that's where it's at. So here's an LR20. So this is like what I'll be using for 11,000 tokens. Seventeen and a half to thirty-five. How does that compare to what I'm using right now? So we have an AR matrix for fifteen. This is an LR twenty, which is you know similar. Less damage, slightly less ammo burn the efficiency is 70% efficiency where this is only 62% so you're getting what an extra 8 almost 8% 8 efficiency and you can you know tear it up obviously what's the markup on this oh wow you can there's only ever been two sold but I mean Almost 10,000 ped. That's a thousand dollars. That's a thousand USD that gun turned around and sold for. But I mean, if you think about it, what's the markup on? So every time I buy one of these, I'm paying 122% markup, <laughs> where that you would just repair it for TT. So in the long run, is that like 22%? It's almost like an extra. It's like a seven or eight ped every time I extra that I'm spending every time I, re you know, go to buy a new one. So they got laser pistol. Perfected. Holy cow, 91% efficiency. I don't even have the skills to use something like this. How about a That'd be cool. Wow, impact protection, 43. Stab, 43. Cut, 43. This is like the best um, armor you could get for like hunting on a Calypso because like 90% of the mobs do either cut, stab, or um, impact. But they have... Just the harness, what's this stuff? Oh, that's a healing. What's the difference? Adjusted, improved, augmented, perfected. 
150 to 150 to 200. It's probably really fast too. Interesting. A lot of pistols. Oh, there's a knife. This is a sword. What kind of stats do we got on this? Fifty to a hundred damage, seventy six percent efficiency. Never never had one sold. Nobody's ever bought one, it looks like. Eleven thousand tokens, twenty six thousand. What's uh what's the ar armor? I'm curious to see what the markup is on that. Nobody's ever sold any. Interesting. I wonder if everybody just who has gotten it, because I'm sure there's people who have gotten it. Um, probably just sold them. All right, so there's that. That was fun. Wow, Twin Peaks is busy today. I wonder why it took so freaking long for it to load. Um, I'm actually gonna go over here. Cause the terminal thing is just gonna take forever. Terminal armor. So two hours of gameplay, five and a half. Yeah, it's been pretty standard. So, all right. Camera froze there for a second. Um, that'll do it for this video. I'll be later back later this afternoon. Not that you'll really know the difference between the videos. And anyways, till next time. You have a good one.